Hi again. So in this session, we're going to talk about important bacterial skin and soft tissue infections that you may encounter in the emergency department. At the end of this lecture, you'll be able to identify some common and important skin and soft tissue infections seen in the ED and describe their pathophysiology, clinical presentation, treatment and prognosis. <clears throat> and again, we're trying to help you provide a differential diagnosis for these skin and soft tissue infections when you see them. So let's start with a 15-year-old athlete who presents to the emergency department with pain and swelling of the left leg. He thinks he got an abrasion while training for a cross-country race. This is what the legs look like. So just pause the video and think about what this is and um, what organisms might be involved, what are their characteristics and so on. So this is cellulitis, usually caused by strep pyogenes or group A beta hemolytic streptococci. Um, often associated also with Staphylococcus aureus, and these organisms can live in synergy. Um, there are some special situations, such as animal bites and marine infections, in which different organisms may be encountered, particularly um, Pasteurella multicida, other anaerobes, and with marine infections, some more specific organisms. Bear in mind also that in certain hosts, such as those with poor vascular supply to the limbs or who are immunocompromised, particularly diabetics, other organisms may be involved, such as gram negatives, for example, pseudomonas, and anaerobes. The clinical features of cellulitis should be well known to you spreading erythema, lymphangitis. Bear in mind that um, if Staph aureus is also involved, you may have some suppuration. And of course, if this progresses to more serious infection, you may see soft tissue necrosis. And patients may have systemic features and features of sepsis. Strep pyogenes, as we said, is group A beta hemolytic strep. One important complication that you might come across is the potential for acute glomerular nephritis in young children. Two things to bear in mind. This really occurs in children up to the age of about seven or eight, so young school children. It's not a feature of older patients. Um, and also, it is something that is seen with skin infections. So throat infections with strep group A may cause rheumatic fever, whereas skin infections tend to cause acute glomerulonephritis. Just um, some advice to look up and understand the microbiology of strep pyogenes and Staph aureus in particular um, as part of your revision. Let's just think a little bit more about animal bites and wounds. Do we use prophylactic antibiotics? Well, it depends. With certain host factors that make them more susceptible to serious infection, we may consider this. So people of extremes of age, people with certain comorbidities such as diabetes or HIV, those with immunocompromise. We need to look at the animals involved. So cats in particular cause infections because they cause deep puncture wounds. Shark bites are also likely to be infected both because of the organisms involved and because a lot of tissue damage occurs. And animals that also envenomate cause tissue damage through the venom which increases the risk of infection. Bites to the hands and feet and genitalia and over joint surfaces are more likely to need prophylactic antibiotics. And wounds that are deep or crush injuries would also fit into this category. Let's think a little bit about cat scratch fever. It's caused by an organism Bartonella hensley, gram-negative aerobic pleomorphic bacillus, 
patients who are scratched or bitten by kittens develop a pustule or papule and then local or regional lymphadenopathy which lasts about one to two weeks uh, which occurs about one to two weeks after the bite i'm sorry and then it may take two to four months to resolve these patients can have recurrent and persistent systemic symptoms such as malaise, fever, anorexia, or headache. And they sometimes complain of sore throat and arthralgia as well. Let's move to the second case. A six-year-old boy brought to the emergency department by his mother with itchy lesions on both legs. On examination, he has excoriated lesions on both legs with papules, vesicles, and blisters. Some of the lesions are filled with golden liquid, while others have surrounding cellulitis. The patient mother says his two siblings have similar lesions. Again, pause the video and see if you could figure out what this is. So this is, of course, a vitigo. It's a highly contagious skin condition that occurs in children of young children of school age, particularly when they are interacting with each other regularly. So you can have school epidemics. These tend to be superficial skin lesions with or without secondary infections um, of, or, or, or occur because of secondary infections of insect bites. And the lesions may be bullous or non-bullous. Tends to be combined organisms, group A, beta, strep, and staph aureus. And the big thing about this condition is the complications. Of course, it can progress to deeper infection, cellulitis, and abscess formation. But importantly, it can lead to acute glomerulonephritis because of the beta hemolytic strep. Treatment can be systemic. Usually, if it's widespread, we need systemic antibiotics. Remember, you need to cover staph aureus with the um, antibiotics prescribed. And you can also use topical antibiotics. It's important to provide appropriate skin care and limit spread and present the precipitants, particularly in tropical countries, prevent insect bites. So as I said earlier, you need to know a little bit about the microbiology of gram-positive cocci such as strep pyogenes and strep pneumonia. You may wish to pause the video and have a read of this slide, but this is just an introduction. You need to know quite a lot more about these organisms. You also need to know about staph aureus. Moving on to case 3, it's a 43-year-old male patient who presents to the ED with a one-day history of fever, prostration, and altered mental status. And he has the following skin lesion on his leg. Again, pause the video, think about the clinical condition of this patient and what this skin condition might be. This is, of course, necrotizing fasciitis one of the necrotizing soft tissue infections. It's important to understand that, that the microbiological etiology is variable in this condition. It might include polymicrobial type or that caused by strep pyogenes, beta eumolytic strep, or clostridial. Um, there are other of classifications, particularly because certain specific organisms, such as those encountered in the marine environment, such as Vibrio, can also cause um, this condition. It's a condition that tends to affect patients who are immunocompromised, and it can cause very serious systemic side effects. Again, this is something that you need to know in a fair amount of detail. Um, so you need to read up about necrotizing fasciitis and also know a little bit about the microbiology of the important organisms listed here. 
And just a little bit more about costerial infection. This is a group of organisms that can cause serious systemic conditions in um, patients, particularly immunocompromised patients. So we need to know the organisms that cause gas gangrene, pseudomembranous colitis, tetanus, and botulism. And we need to know a little bit about each of these conditions. Again, some homework for you. So that was a very brief run through um, the organisms that cause bacterial skin infections. If you have any questions or queries, you can pull, um, bring them up in class. So in summary, <coughs> we talked about these bacterial skin infections, cellulitis in petigo, animal bites and scratches, and necrotizing fasciitis. Thanks for listening. I hope you found this useful.